Good morning. Today our primary objective will be to review beta decay. Specifically, we'll try to understand what those symbols mean. And we'll come to understand that radiation is emitted during a beta decay and that a new element or atom is formed. Ultimately, beta decay happens because a nucleus is unstable. So the question we'll be answering is when is the nucleus of an atom stable or unstable? We'll also be looking at common word problems. Example one, a beta decay process occurs where a positron is created. Solve for X for the following nuclear reaction. We'll also look at example two and example three. So when is the nucleus of an atom stable or unstable? Well, here's a nucleus. And focusing on the nucleus and counting the number of neutrons and protons, we have six protons and six neutrons. Now recall that protons have a positive charge. As a result, since there are only protons within the nucleus, they will repel each other. This is referred to as an electrostatic force. So what keeps a nucleus together? Well, clearly it's not the electrostatic force. A nucleus only has protons. Remember that the neutrons do not have a charge and the protons will be repelling each other. So there must be another force within a nucleus that keeps it together. That other force is called the strong nuclear force or just a strong force. Both the neutrons and the protons experience the strong force. Neutrons attract neutrons with this force, protons attract protons, and in addition, <laughs> protons attract neutrons and vice versa. This force acts at short distances and really only within the nucleus. So when is the nucleus of an atom stable or unstable? Well, there's two factors to consider. The ratio of the number of neutrons to the number of protons and the size of the nucleus. Helium, which is small, compared to uranium, which is much larger. So we're going to use this graph to think about this question. On the x-axis, we have the number of protons. On the y-axis, the number of neutrons. And I've plotted a line there which represents a one-to-one -one ratio of neutrons to protons. So we'll look at some very general trends, but remember there's always some outliers. So we'll begin with small atoms. Usually, when the number of neutrons is equal to the number of protons, the atom is stable. So for example, carbon-12, which is six neutrons, and six protons, that's stable. But carbon-14 is unstable. Eight neutrons compared to six protons. And carbon-10 is also unstable. Four neutrons in comparison to six protons. Sodium-23, with 12 neutrons and 11 protons, that is considered stable but sodium-24 with an extra neutron is unstable. Magnesium-24, magnesium-25, and magnesium-26 is all considered stable. So for larger atoms, in general, the number of neutrons is greater than the number of protons for the atom to be considered stable. Nickel, 58, with 30 neutrons compared to 28 protons, is stable. But nickel, 63, with 35 neutrons, is unstable. Krypton, 84, is considered to be stable, with 48 neutrons compared to 36 protons. But krypton, 85, is considered to be unstable with an extra neutron. A nucleus that is unstable will decay. 
which means that the number of protons and neutrons will change. During this decay, energy is emitted by the nucleus, and that's why it's called a radioactive decay. The energy is emitted in the form of radiation. So now let's focus on beta decay. During the decay of an unstable nucleus, a beta particle is emitted. And there are two types of beta decay, beta minus and beta positive, or beta plus. Beta minus, an electron, is emitted or ejected. And for a beta plus decay, a positron is ejected or emitted. So now let's focus specifically on a beta minus decay. Within the nucleus, a neutron transforms into a proton, emitting from the nucleus an electron, which is a beta minus particle, an antineutrino, and radiation. Sometimes this is also referred to as a negative beta decay. So examples of beta minus decay. Well, let's focus on our nucleus. And counting, we have six protons and eight neutrons. This decays to form seven protons and seven neutrons. Notice that a neutron has been transformed into a proton. During all beta decays, charge has to be conserved. That means that the total charge before the decay has to equal the total charge after the decay. Now, if we look right now, we know that neutrons do not have any charge. So before the decay, we have six protons, a charge of plus six. After the decay, we have seven protons. So right now, charge seems to not be conserved, as 6 is not equal to 7. However, this is not the complete process. We have a neutron transforming into a proton. But in addition, when this occurs, an electron is emitted or ejected by the nucleus. Now going back to this equation, and recalling that we now have to consider the charge of an electron, and that charge is negative 1. Now charge is conserved, as 7 plus negative 1 is equal to 6. So this is the overall picture of any beta minus decay. We have the conversion of a neutron to a proton, an electron, which is the beta particle, is emitted. Radiation is also emitted by the nucleus. And we have this particle that we haven't discussed yet. It's also emitted. This particle is called an anti-neutrino. What's important to know about this particle is that it has no mass and no charge. Looking at the nucleus, we can write that this nucleus is carbon-14-6. The 14 is the atomic mass number. It comes from adding the number of neutrons to the number of protons. And 6 is the atomic number, the number of protons. This nucleus can be represented by nitrogen-14-7. The 14 comes from 7 plus 7. So we can use this equation to represent what we just described. This equation may also be written like this, where we include the mass and the charge of the electron. Mass is considered to be zero, as it's tiny in comparison to the mass of a neutron or a proton, the mass of the electron that is. And this refers to the charge of the electron. You may also see this equation written in this form as well. Notice that 14 on one side is equal to 14 on the other side. Notice that the atomic mass number 
It does not change. 14 equals 14 plus 0 plus 0. Reviewing this row of numbers, we see that charge is conserved, meaning 6 equals 7 plus negative 1 plus 0. Comparing alpha particles to beta particles, alpha particles usually cannot pass through paper. However, beta particles can pass through paper. Usually, however, beta particles cannot pass through aluminum foil. Turning our attention to beta plus decay, within the nucleus, a proton transforms into a neutron, emitting from the nucleus a positron, which is called a beta plus particle, a neutrino, and radiation. A positron has the same mass as an electron, however it has a positive charge. Positron is said to be the antimatter counterpart of the electron. Sometimes a beta plus decay is also called a positive beta decay. So let's look at one example of a beta plus decay. Focusing on nucleus, we have six protons and four neutrons. A decay takes place and we have a new nucleus. Notice that a proton has been transformed into a neutron. Now we have five protons and five neutrons. And this is the complete picture of what will happen during this decay. We have a proton being converted into a neutron. We have a positron being ejected or emitted by the nucleus, represented by E+, radiation, and we have this particle here. This particle is called a neutrino. It has no mass and no charge. Reviewing this nucleus, we can write it as carbon 10, 6. And this can be written as boron 10, 5. The beta decay can be represented with this equation, or with this equation here, where the zero is written there because we consider the mass of the positron to be very small. It's extremely small in comparison to the mass of the neutron and proton. And the one represents the charge of the positron. And that's identical to the charge of a proton. You may also see this equation written with the symbol beta. Notice once again this row here. 10 equals 10 plus 0 plus 0. And notice this particular row here, 6 equals 5 plus 1 plus 0. You may come across the term parent and daughter. The daughter nucleus is what results after the parent nucleus has undergone a decay. So now to summarize what we've learned. The daughter nucleus and the parent nucleus have the exact same sum of neutrons and protons. That does not change during a decay. Another way of saying that is that the daughter nucleus has the same atomic mass number as the parent nucleus. And yet another way of saying the same thing is that the total number of nucleons remains unchanged. A nucleon is a proton or a neutron. Only the atomic number changes during a beta decay. Going back to this graph, let's say we're on this side of the graph. In other words, we have an atom, and when we plot the atom's number of protons compared to the number of neutrons, it's somewhere in the region that I've highlighted there. Typically, when this takes place, 
that particle or nucleus will undergo a beta plus decay. So for example, carbon 10. Carbon 10 has six protons and four neutrons. So if we plot that data point, it'll be approximately in that area there where I've pointed with the arrow. And that will undergo a beta plus decay. When it goes through a beta plus decay, it ends up having five neutrons and five protons. So now if we look at the region I've just highlighted, and if we have a nucleus that has a number of protons and a number of neutrons that falls in that region, typically it'll undergo a beta minus decay. For example, carbon-14, which has eight neutrons and six protons. The arrow points to that data point, which is approximately plotted there. And this will undergo a beta minus decay, the resulting product being seven neutrons and seven protons, being nitrogen. Now on to our secondary objective, to review those three examples. Example one, a beta decay process occurs where a positron is created. Solve for x. Please pause the video now. All right, I hope you've tried this question. I'm just going to rewrite this to include the numbers for the positron. Positron having mass number of zero and a charge of one. And now we're just going to focus on that row. Six equals x plus one, or x equals five. Remember, during a beta decay, a beta plus decay, a neutrino is always created as well. So that should be included in the equation. Example two, uranium-237 undergoes a beta decay process where an electron is emitted, a beta minus decay. Solve for X for the following nuclear reaction. Once again, when this decay takes place, you should include whether it's a neutrino or an anti-neutrino. In this case, for a beta minus decay, it is an anti-neutrino. Please pause the video now. Okay, I hope you've tried this question. For the electron, I'm just going to rewrite it with a mass number of zero and a charge of negative one. Now we're gonna walk through the math. 92 equals x plus negative one, or x equals 93. Finally, example three. Sodium-22 undergoes a beta decay process where a positron is emitted, beta plus decay. Solve for X for the nuclear reaction. Please pause the video. Okay, I hope you've tried this question. Once again, it's important to note that we should add that a neutrino is also created during this decay. And going through the math, x equals 10 plus 1. Why is it 1? Well, it's 1 because the positron has a charge of 1. Or x equals 11. So, in conclusion, I hope you've enjoyed this review of a beta decay. Have a great day. Bye-bye.